Hello everyone, my name is Rona and welcome to the 90 Day Startup. I'm so excited to be here with you today helping you to save time, make money, increase productivity, and grow your startup. Today, we're going to be talking about business opportunities and trends in accounting services. So stay tuned. We have a lot of information to cover today on this topic. One of the things that I always encourage you to do, of course, is to download a copy of the 90 Day Startup Checklist so that you can go back and check off things that you may have already started doing as you start up your business or things that perhaps you overlooked as you were starting your business. It is designed to help those of you who are new to the business startup process as well as for those of you who have already started your business and you are now going back and looking at things that may have fallen through the cracks. One of the items that I like to discuss when we're doing our business strategy session is item number five, because this is just a simple exercise where you take a page out of your um, notebook that you put together and you write down two columns. You write down everything that you have, everything that you think you will have. You can also throw this into a quick spreadsheet and type in the, the information, put numbers by everything, and just look at, wow, if I wanna do this, how much is it gonna cost me to run this on a monthly basis? You may need to scale back. You may need to work longer because this is all about working as you launch your business. You may need to hire someone to actually do aspects of your business while you are still working. And so this helps you to just to start just thinking about what's going to be involved. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it. It's just a tool that helps you to determine the pace at which you will start to eventually transition into running your business. Or you may need to start it, you know, five years before you even get out and, and have someone help you run it. And that way you can add and invest money into that business as it starts to grow or have a, a, a stop gate where you decide whether or not it's a no or no go and whether or not you're going to, you know, decide that you're not going to do it. All of this can be accomplished before you leave your job. That's part of the reason why I strongly encourage you to get a copy of that 90 day startup checklist and start attending the business strategy sessions. Okay. So one of the things that I like to do is make sure that I disclose that I am not being compensated for using the Business Opportunities Handbook publication, as I usually say in the beginning of my business strategy session segments. I want to make sure that people um, realize that this is just one of the publications, one of many, but the one that I chose because it has over a hundred different categories. And within those hundred categories, niches of different opportunities and trends that were probably not even on your radar. Now, for some of you who already have a business, you may be looking at trying to create multiple revenue streams. Or perhaps you are simply looking at maybe forming a partnership with someone who has already started a business and the information on that particular industry is something that we're discussing as a part of our strategy sessions. If not, feel free to leave that information in the comment section on any industry that you might be interested in. We will definitely be able to find information on whatever that field is, even if it is niche down. As I mentioned before, there are tons of opportunities that are available in this handbook. But what we like to do is we like to match up the information that we get in different publications with what is actually going on in the federal statistics. And we do that by going to the census data as well as the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. So for today, we're going to be looking at the accounting NAICS code, which is 541 211. And as it relates to the Business Opportunities Handbook, we're going to be looking at accounting and tax services, which will be identified on page 25 of the Business Opportunities Handbook. There are multiple opportunities and trends that are more traditional when we start talking about 
accounting. And as it relates to some of the opportunities that I was able to identify on page 25 of the handbook, some of those other niche areas within the accounting industry included tax preparation services, your general accounting services, payroll services, and tax prep schools. So there's quite a few other niche categories that you could delve into. And if this is something that you're interested in, of course, you will be able to delve further. And I always invite each and every one of you to do your additional research because there may be some one-offs. For some of you, you may specialize in perhaps some type of automation uh, accounting software um, training or perhaps something that's related to accounts receivable or something related to accounts payable. So there are many different niches that you can drill down to. And so for that reason, I always encourage you to do your additional research. Now, of course, when we're talking about the Business Opportunities Handbook, if you choose to look at this as an opportunity, some of the ways that you can be a part of this industry include one-time franchise fees. Now, some of these also have annual and monthly franchise fees. There are capital requirements. Most of them provide some type of training and support. Startup costs, franchise opportunities and or partnerships. There is liquid capital involved. But depending on what it is, again, that you're doing, that could be nominal. Financing could be involved or offered. And, of course, a lot of these fall within the territory code of one, which means that they're available throughout the United States. One of the reasons why I like to do the business opportunity strategy sessions is to give you an opportunity to look at the feasibility of what it would take, doing the research to start looking at what the steps would be in order to get into this particular industry. Now, of course, a lot of these franchises have been around since the early 80s, but some of them are just getting into the game as um, um, recently as 2015. And the investment in terms of getting started for this particular industry could be as little as $299 on up to $100,000 or more. Many of you already have certifications, um, your CPAs and other licenses and credentials that qualify you for many of the opportunities that are identified in the handbook. But as I always say, do your research. One of the things that I like to do is tie in the research element of what we're doing by pulling a zip code from a, either a place that I've been or traveled to or one of the zip code reports that I do. And for this particular business strategy session, we're gonna be looking at the Lake Forest, Illinois zip code of 60045. We're gonna first look at the county information and then we're gonna drill down to that particular zip code just to see what the accounting opportunities are like within that particular zip code. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is click on the Data, Tools, and Developers tab. Click on the Data, Tools, and Apps, and then click on American Fact Finder. The county that we're going to be researching is Lake County, Illinois, which is where the Lake Forest, Illinois zip code is located within. And so we're going to get started by clicking on the Advanced Search tab. Go down to the Industry Codes. In the filter box, we'll go ahead and type in the NAICS code, 541211. And it has here, Office of Certified Public Accountants. And so we're gonna see what's going on in the Lake County location Add this, and once we've selected this box, we're going to add it to the search selection. And then from there, we're going to add the geography that narrows our search to that particular location. Starting with the county, state of Illinois. Lake County, we're going to add that to our selections. 
and then we're going to look at the data for CPAs within Lake County, Illinois. We do that by clicking on the Geography Area Series, the County Business Patterns, because that's important when you're looking at whether or not your business idea or the industry that you're interested in how well it's doing. This is a way of doing the research in order to determine how well that particular industry is doing in this particular location. And as you can see here, there are 170 establishments. Now, one of the things that I always encourage you to do is look at the previous year's data to see if there's a decline or an increase or a boom. That will also give you some type of um, indicator as well. So let's just look at um, the data for 2013. 198, 193 for 2014, and 170. So there is a slight decline there, and there may be an explanation for that. But again, that's something you would do further research on in order to figure out what are you observing in that area. And if you're interested in doing business in that area, of course, you can. There's so many different websites that you could go to in order to find out what's actually going on. You have chambers of commerce there you have city information, you have all kinds of city and county information that you can find out pretty much anything you need to know about what's going on in any area that you're interested in doing business. We're also going to take a look at the specific zip code itself, which is zip, which is 60045. And I do that first by removing the county code. And simply then selecting the and then I go down to the zip code itself select the state again and then the zip code which in this case is 60045 alright we're going to add that to our selection close it out and then we're gonna select the zip code business stats by employment class for this particular location and here are the findings right here so this tells you the number of establishments it tells you that there are there is at least one firm there that has up to 20 to 49 employees and then so on and so forth. it breaks it down in terms of the number of possible companies that are there now again that depends on the number of surveys that are turned in when they send out the census for small businesses in certain locations across the country that information is related to those surveys and so from there one of the things that you can do is do a Google map search and type in accounting or CPAs in that particular zip code. And then you will start to see different firms that are um, located in that particular area. And that helps you do research on your, you know, if you're looking at an opportunity to partner with a company or maybe even work for a company, you'll be able to start to see the businesses that are located in those locations. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to the Bureau of Labor and Statistics and we're going to do, we did the NAICS research and now we're going to take a look at a few labor categories and we do that by going to the Occupational Outlook Handbook and the last time I did this it, it got squirrely on me but you have to know more than one way to get to the information you need. For this particular industry we're looking for 13 dash two zero one one now I do this research ahead of times but sometimes the internet all right so it did work and we're gonna go ahead and click on accountants and auditors and as you can see here you see the uh, median pay for that industry 
the um, type of um, education entry level for this industry, job training, number of jobs, et cetera. And I've shown you a couple of different ways of how to drill down to this information. One of the first things that I do though, um, in addition to looking at the other tabs, is go to the job outlook so that I can see that SOC code, which is the standard occupational classification code. And from there, you're able to do as much research as you need. And it also gives you information on similar occupations. When you look at the labor categories that are offered on the Bureau of Labor and Statistics website, it gives you so many different possibilities in terms of related occupations that are related to accounting that are not going to be identified in the Business Opportunities Handbook. There may not be franchise opportunities. However, there may be business opportunities if you have this particular skill set or if you're looking for people that you want to join your team who have a particular skill set. And of course, all of these have their own SOC codes. So the research that you do for this can go on and on. The other thing that I also encourage you to do is look at the licenses and certification and registration requirements. It gives you all of the information of the different um, institutes and exams and, and licenses that are required on this particular industry and everything that's involved. And this may be a place where you would go to even write down a list of questions when you're interviewing a CPA to find out if they are a part of any of these organizations. If you want to check their credentials, this may give you a good starting point. Um, it's not enough, you know, nowadays to take someone's word for what they have on their resume. So this may be a good place for you to go in order to find out if that person even has these credentials. There may be a way of verifying and validating whether or not they actually have the licenses or the certifications necessary in order to do any type of accounting, let alone certified accounting for your business. There's so much information that you can find out by going to this website, especially if you are trying to um, build a team of qualified people in order to help you run a successful company. Now, with that being said, we're gonna take that same SOC code and we're gonna go to plug that into the onetonline.org site. This is an extension of the information research again information that you will want to do for a number of reasons perhaps you're looking to hire someone with these credentials maybe you need to obtain these credentials yourself and or you want additional information on the industry in terms of an investment opportunity the list goes on we click here and i always tell you to do some um clicking around to see what they're saying about our trends of growth or decline for that matter. But once you click on the link that you're looking for, it is going to open up so much information for you that helps you to understand some of the skill sets that, re that are required for some of these different industries. And you can go ahead and click on them to show you all of those skills and or you can um, minimize those, look at the abilities. These are things that you would be observing if you're interviewing someone for a position perhaps. Th there's tons of information and ideas that you can extract from this website in order to get an understanding of the type of skill set that's needed for this, especially if you're interviewing someone for a particular position. This would be an excellent starting point for finding that information. And of course, I always like to go to the SVP range, with this, which is the specific vocational preparation range that tells you how much education or the length of time is needed in order to become um, you know, an expert or say mid-level or junior level qualifications for how long it takes in order to become proficient in any type of skill set that's related to any of the SOC codes that you're doing research on. No matter what type of business that you do decide to venture into, 
the key thing that will be so important is nurturing your relationships. Even if you start your business with your friends and family, nurture those relationships. Those relationships turns into referrals. If you're working within your community, the same thing starts to happen because what we do is we take that information, we then start to create lists so that we can communicate with the different groups that we're doing business with. But it's important to nurture those relationships when you're starting your business from the very start because it's about really about knowing and trusting who it is that you're doing business with. And so that's going to be very important. Now we get down to the plan and action piece of what it is that we're trying to do. The idea and feasibility and planning, they kind of go hand in hand. Some of your plans may take longer than others. I don't want you to get wrapped up and caught up in the idea that this is a five-year, 10-year, however long venture. Just start incrementally putting your plan into action. The idea feeds into the plan. The plan feeds into action. That's all that's required at this point. This portion of what it is that we're doing as a strategy and feasibility has nothing to do with launching your business unless you are ready. When you get started though, again, I always refer back to downloading the 90 day startup checklist because there will be at least 10 items on that list that you can be um, looking at in terms of the planning perspective and or improving your business. So there's something on there for everyone, no matter what phase of your business that you're in. With that being said, I invite you to subscribe as well as share this information with someone who you might be interested in doing business with or perhaps someone who may be um, approaching you to do business with. You may have requirements for them. And one of those items on the checklist is number 50, which is doing a business plan. And so each of you download a copy of the 90 day startup checklist and start going through and identifying the things that you want to work on. And then of course you can reach out to me. I'm available at Rona at the 90 day startup.com. And then from there you can join me for a free business strategy session, or you can join me for a one-on-one -on -one strategy webinar where we focus on your particular business model. The links below will provide you with that additional information. In the meantime, though, if you have any questions, of course, you can reach out to me at my email address. I hope that you were able to learn something from this particular business strategy session. And I invite you to look at the other videos on my YouTube channel as well. Be sure to subscribe. And remember, my purpose is to assist you with helping you to save time, make money, increase productivity, and grow your startup. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.